flailing around yeah. her other arm. Okay, go ahead. Whenever you're ready. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Buttermilk, buttermilk, buttermilk biscuit. <gasps> Today, I'm Carly. <laughs> I guess I'm Carly every day. <laughs> to Cooking with Missing Ingredients. I'm Carly and today we are making buttermilk biscuits without the buttermilk. Uh, Carly, aren't those just biscuits then? What is buttermilk? So buttermilk, like all the other things that have inspired this video series, is sort of a strange item that you have to buy just for a recipe. So you're probably like, I know what butter tastes like, and I know what milk tastes like. And this is nothing like either one of those delicious products. It's very, it's very tangy. Cut to what we're gonna be talking about. It's a cultured milk product, like yogurt, like kefir, like sour cream. It's milk that there's a cultured bacteria that creates that tangy taste to it and thickens it up. Why is it buttermilk? Well, going back to the olden days, when you keep whipping and churning the cream to make the butter, there is the extra liquid milk product. That is the buttermilk. That in and of itself does not taste anything like buttermilk that we buy in the store. Because before we started pasteurizing our milk, you'd leave your milk out, and that bacteria would just naturally ferment. Why don't we do that now? Because now when we pasteurize it and we make sure to kill all the bad stuff that makes us sick, we're also killing all of those extra cultures. Producers are taking low fat milk, usually for buttermilk, and then adding certain cultures like probiotics, gut health. So these certain bacteria that are good bacteria, gut health, that are in the milk product that they add, gut health. And all those different cultures then create this thickened, fermented product. Now, if you buy raw milk from a dairy farmer, which is milk straight out of the cow, you have to go find a good old boy dairy farmer or a good old milkmaid. You'd have to, <laughs> like, I mean, if you own a cow, you could milk your own cow, be a molly milker, and be utterly creating your own raw milk. Today, we're gonna start by making some real buttermilk. Quick obligatory disclaimer, we are going to be using raw milk in the next little segment of the video to show you how to make real buttermilk, but the FDA does say it's not fit for human consumption. Do it at your own risk. So here's our jug of raw milk from a local dairy farm. As you can see, uh, it's not homogenized, so you've got the nice little layer of cream on the top. So we're going to pour that out separately. I'm gonna attempt to um, pour off the top of the cream. It's not gonna work. Okay, so that was not going to work. So we just cut off the top part that we had already used and now we're just gonna like ladle the cream off. Ooh, look at that. It's nice thick cream on the top. Mmm, yummy. It look like an old advertisement. There. Yeah. It's copyrighted you just... though, you can't take that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Alright, so Here's my cream in my little repurposed mason jar. So um, I'm gonna start shaking. And I don't know how long it actually takes. So I'm gonna shake it a little bit and I'm gonna pretend that all of this, all these calories that I'm burning and all this arm strength that I'm building up is going to equal out the, um, calorie count of, of the butter that I'm gonna eat and the biscuits as well. I think it I think it'll equal out both. I think I think that's fair actually when I think about it now that it's gonna like equal out both the calorie count of the biscuits and the butter and even the jam that I put on it. I think so. Second. All right, let's take a take a Ooh. progress peek. Ooh. Let's see here. Yeah, look at it. Four. Look at that, so awesome. And that didn't even take that long, no. actually. Let's, I'm really gonna keep cool. going a bit more.
All right, so this looks amazing. Here, strain out all the extra buttermilk. Nice, soft, whipped, homemade butter. Our buttermilk. The magic of old cooking shows. And one of my favorite things was always the magic of the things that are already made, so we did that today. You're supposed to leave it out for like 12 to 24 hours. So that's where the first half of that jug was. So this was the buttermilk that we left out. We, we let it sit out at room temperature with the cover on uh, for 24 hours. And then I did put it in the fridge after that because I got scared. All right, so we have our official genuine buttermilk. It smells very yeasty. Okay, we've got buttermilk from the store. This is kefir. We've got plain yogurt and sour cream. We're gonna taste these. So real buttermilk, all right. Yeasty, can smell, I can uh, taste the sweet milk behind it. Kind of has like a blue cheesy yogurty kind of taste to it. Okay, so here's buttermilk. Probably a little bit thicker because the buttermilk, you've taken all the fat out when you make the butter and it's kind of like more just watery, but this is a little bit thicker. It has like a, a richness. It's a little bit, it's kind of like sour cream actually, like a thinned down sour cream. More tangy than sour cream, I suppose. So here's kefir. Okay, that's like tangy yogurtness. I mean, I know what plain yogurt tastes like. I love sour cream. I mean, I gotta try sour cream. I can't, can't not eat sour cream. Who turns down an opportunity to eat some sour cream? Anyway, uh, you might be asking, well, which of these four cultured milk products that I find in my grocery store tastes like real buttermilk? And I'm gonna say none of them because to me it tastes more like kind of blue cheese than any of these. I'm gonna say since you're probably not gonna go and make your own buttermilk from scratch, I think for a control we're gonna use like regular buttermilk. Out of these other three fermented milk products, that this one tasted mostly like sour cream and also is probably the most likely for you to have in your fridge, we're gonna use that as our um, third one. For our fourth one, we are going to do the big Buttermilk substitution. Hands down, the thing you see over and over and over again, if you don't have buttermilk, is to put lemon juice or vinegar into milk. Uh, I'm going to try this. I did look up some research online and I found a couple of pieces of advice. Somebody suggested to warm the milk up. Also, someone said to use two tablespoons rather than the normally recommended one tablespoon. Also out there, you might have seen cream of tartar, which if you watched the um, meringues video, uh, you'll know that cream of tartar is an acid like lemon juice and vinegar. The acid is supposed to curdle, create that mock fermented milk product thing. I have two tablespoons of vinegar in here. All right. Oh yeah, wow, that, oh wow. This like really curdled it up. Yeah, I don't know. This one does taste a lot like the store-bought buttermilk actually, so. So now comes the most important part of any recipe, which is butter. Butter! This is supposed to be in biscuits with or without buttermilk. What I read is this is supposed to be the most important, crucial moment part of making biscuits, which is making sure that your butter is super cold and doesn't melt. So this is a frozen stick of butter. And I went ahead and bought this little hand cheese grater thingy. I've seen the recommendation to use a, a like a cheese grater. I haven't actually tried this yet, so we'll see if it works. Let's start here because it's right in front of my face. All right, here we go. I thought this was gonna be cool. Oh well, I thought it would be fun. Like, you know, the Parmesan cheese person at the Italian restaurant. Womp womp. I mean, it's still yummy butter. I'm not gonna waste that. Okay, so butter cheese grater failure. I thought we had a better cheese grater, but apparently we don't. We're Matt's gonna, gonna teach us how to cut your frozen butter for biscuits. You want small bits of butter for, perhaps I should have gotten a- Bigger knife. Bigger knife, yeah. Oh, big, a bigger knife for the job is more appropriate. 
once in half lengthwise like that, 90 degrees, cut it in half again, and then cut it lengthwise here like this or widthwise. There we go. So then you end up with, you know, pretty good uh, crumbly bits of butter. And then you'll put that back in the freezer while, uh, while you're fixing everything else. So yeah. we'll go okay. back in the freezer with you. All right, nice. And then uh, we'll cut the rest. All right, so enough jabber, John. I'm like salivating for some buttermilk biscuits here. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so I have my four bowls here. We, you know, we're gonna go crazy as usual here on uh, Tabletop Eats. So apparently I can't finish my sentences or say words properly, but anyway. Okay, so let's start with two cups, which is supposed to be 8.5 ounces of flour. All right, just a quick tablespoon of sugar just to sweeten up your life, you know. Tablespoon. I think right, it's a right. tablespoon. Yeah, I got of, it. Uh, I got it. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. So if you watched our meringues video, baking powder is actually cream of tartar and baking soda already mixed in together. I've seen a lot of recipes that seem to call for both baking powder and baking soda, so I'm not really sure then why they don't just modify the baking powder, but they're saying to add the extra quarter teaspoon of baking soda. I guess just for a little extra leavening. So, that's still there. So we've got all of our dry ingredients all mixed together and prepped and ready so that we can get all of our cold, wet ingredients in here as quickly as possible and get them in the oven because that is supposed to be the way to make really good biscuits. So we're gonna preheat the oven and get our pans ready. Matt and I are going to double team this so that we have the best biscuits ever. Yeah. But these biscuits are made with love, so of course they're the best biscuits ever. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? So we've got all of our things ready to go. We have our frozen butter. We've got store-bought buttermilk, regular milk. We've got our vinegar in uh, milk curdled substance and we've got um, sour cream. This is half a cup of sour cream and half a cup of water. Time is of the essence for our frozen butter. Um, we are gonna do this as quickly as possible. What are five we gonna minutes. Give our, five minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes. Five we're gonna, minutes. We're gonna do this in five minutes. Okay, ready? Here we go. And go. Butter All right, in. butter. Just uh, okay. pour it in. Okay. Important part of when you cut your biscuits with the biscuit cutters, you're not supposed to twist. to go and let's get these boogers in the oven um, because we don't want the butter to melt so we've got our control and we'll put that um, there we've got our regular milk next to it we've got our concoction buttermilk substitute and then our sour cream right there pretty so we have all these extra scraps that we can use for extra biscuits but um, so you can, you can refold these up together and make more biscuit, but just keep in mind that it's not going to be as light and fluffy because they're more overworked at this point. Look at how pretty they are. They're beautiful. All right, we have our hot pads. We're gonna pull them out. Okay, ready? We have our um, control buttermilk, regular milk biscuits there vinegar milk substitute sour cream there All right um, yeah let's start Do out with control. the control let's see kind of how it breaks out breaks apart so nice and Ooh. buttery looking buttery, yeah, yeah. Mm, fluffy so, yeah, nice pretty good yeah, yeah. Okay, cheers. cheers yeah you or can we, and yeah. in here right too you get the you get the nice get layers the there look at that mm. you can open oh yeah okay open it up it's, it's a little bit dense 
Okay. Here's All right. <laughs> super buttery, mm -hmm. which I don't think anyone's going to complain about. Once mm -hmm. you get more to the middle, you can really start seeing those layers coming out. It's Wrong. a very simple recipe. The moment of truth here, that one had buttermilk in it, okay? So this one is just milk. It's just milk. Okay. Do you really need to go through any of that going and buying yourself some buttermilk nonsense? I feel like the layers here are more defined. Yeah. In this it one. It seems more dense. Yeah. But that could just be like how we... Because we added a little bit more flour. So we're going to go... We're going to go more with flavor here. Mmm. It's more plain, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's good, but it's plain in comparison. Yeah, this, to it, you yeah, know? the buttermilk one has mm -hmm. a more, uh, a je ne sais quoi. Yeah, it's hard to say what it is. Yeah, it this doesn't is. It just tastes like flour. Yeah, this, this one. This tastes more like flour. Yeah, this tastes like flour and butter. Mm -hmm. And this is flour and butter and. Something. And, this is our milk and vinegar curdled substitute. Okay. And already in the oven, I feel like this one looked the most like risen. Ooh, oh, oh yeah. okay, yeah. That looks oh wow. Really nice. All right. Yeah, that one. Oh, that one's really good. Much better than just the uh -huh. plain milk. That's for darn sure. Comparable to the buttermilk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honestly, okay. So with the two tablespoons of vinegar. You've got that acid that's really interacting with the baking soda and the mm -hmm. leavener. And so I think it has made these more light, more yeah. puffy. Okay, mm -hmm. and then... Sour cream. I'm hopeful for this one, mm -hmm. personally. Well, sour cream is delicious. We've already co covered that, right? Okay. So, hmm. Oh. oh it's flaking in a way... That's more. That, that's like, different that than the others. Like, yeah, no, this one's like more dense then flaky this one has actual flaky layers yeah this one you really can see the layers coming yeah, out yeah this one really has more of the layers i like that one the best yeah uh it has that same tanginess from as the buttermilk and the and the acid uh the vinegar or vinegar but it milk. has even more fat mm -hmm. It has. It has even more fat from the sour cream. It has like a, a wholeness mm. to the to the flavor. Mm. That one is almost like, like, I think even better than the buttermilk. Because you can taste the creamy. Oh well, I like the vinegar and milk one better than the buttermilk. Yeah. Personally, Man, forget buttermilk. <laughs> That's what you want in a biscuit mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. I never thought about sour cream before. But now, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. In conclusion, I think you can see which one we liked the most. Yeah, that sour cream one <laughs> sour was cream one is gone. aces. Um, yep. Vinegared milk, pretty darn good. I liked this one. Next to, before we tried the sour cream, this one's the best, I think, yeah. personally. Because it definitely was lighter. It had the mm -hmm. lightness to it because it has the extra acid that's helping the leavening happening. And it has the tang from the, the vinegar that you're looking for from the buttermilk. Yeah, yeah. The buttermilk biscuit, of course, it's like a classic. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't go wrong with it. It's good. Just the plain it's, milk. Yeah. The plain milk, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't throw it away. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, if yeah. I sat down and they were like, we made these biscuits, just regular milk, i eat them. But uh, yeah. comparative to, they're the weakest of the yeah. of the bunch. That that um, cultured fermented mm -hmm. uh, thing yeah, from the buttermilk yeah. does add a layer of flavor mm -hmm. that really it's elevates it. It's not like, it. oh yeah, there it is. Like, oh, I can taste the chocolate or whatever in something. But yeah. it definitely makes it more. It it gives it more flavor for sure. And so, definitely, we have found today that the without is not as good as with something. The, we're gonna have to leave you folks here so that we can go make more butter to work off the calories for eating all these biscuits, okay? But before ready? we leave, can but you tell me leave, yeah. about how to get that cool apron? Today we have son of a biscuit on the apron. Son of a biscuit! Oh. We have son of a biscuit. He's you fun. Know? Yeah. He's like a dad biscuit. He's got a little tray mom, of biscuit whatever. little, or yeah, mom biscuit. It's a parent. It's a parent biscuit. It's a parent biscuit. 
And apparently, apparently, it's a biscuit. Apparently, it's a biscuit that's uh, like, well, son of a biscuit, you're yeah. falling off it's, the pan, which is something that we biscuits. very could have, very well could have done today. But anyway, you can also get it on a t-shirt or a baby outfit or a bib, or there's all kinds of cool things that you can get this, these designs on, as well as others. Um, so check out our website and our store. We have all kinds of videos all over the place if you follow, subscribe, and all that so that you can make sure and see future seasons of um, Tabletop Eats uh, shows. And yeah, so thank you for watching. Yeah, thank you. And have, uh, enjoy your biscuits. Yeah, have a biscuit full day. <laughs> oh. Bye. Bye.